Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. <sighs> with the wind chimes. There, there's my theme music for the show. I guess I should do it at the beginning. That would be kind of amusing, wouldn't it? Um, today is. I have no clue. I have no clue. What is today? It's Wednesday. It's June 23rd. If you're on video, you can see that I'm back in my secret garden with my favorite coffee mug cup and also my favorite one of my favorite shirts summer shirt which also matches my cup. (laughs) I do have my things I like don't I sometimes it's a little bit um I don't know what the word is. It's not distressing. It's um I don't know sometimes every once while it hits me that it's like oh there Jeffy there is there is this thing that you like that you get lots of. Uh, So it's been a week. Oops not gonna be able to settle in here. Um yeah all right so we'll just give you guys (laughs) The, 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 there is too much. Let me sum up. <laughs> also, I'm gonna have to pause. Oh, and look, I even forgot earrings today. I'm just, I am, I'm decombobulated. Uh, we will be back on track tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, definitely next week. Um, <laughs> but it's funny for some, you know, I always wear my hair like this in the summertime when it's hot to get it up off of my neck. So I put it up in these big barrettes and a very high ponytail. And uh, for some reason lately, I it maybe it's because it's slightly dividing like this, but it's looking very Cla- Clarissa explains it all. If you get this, you are my tribe, you are, or at least my cohort. Uh, anyway, so this is what happened. Uh, I think I mentioned on Friday that we were going to go rescue my parents from Colorado. Um, and I got my stepfather the plane ticket uh, to fly home. So Dave and I got up fairly early on Saturday, drove down to or drove down, drove up to Colorado Springs with the intention of being there um, for a couple of hours to pack up my mom and bring her back. We got there in time to see my stepdad um, and he was uh, having a hard time not breathing well um, unstable the having that terrible infection you know, that had him hospitalized you know they'd given him those super powered IV uh, antibiotics that really knocked him for a loop. So we I'm seeing little things here what are these grapes are they unripe grapes that have fallen yeah I guess so. There are some riper grapes up top. Look, little tiny unripe grape. Something's been out here digging in my grape arbor in my absence. Just gonna put a stop to that. Uh, so the, my my folks par- my folks friends uh, the Conleys who are actually people I've known all my life because uh, they lived next door to my mom and my dad when I was born on the Air Force Base in Selma. And so my mom said oh well that Conley's were coming over to help them go to the airport and she's like aren't you coming too and I'm like I don't think we need six people (laughs) to go to the airport. So David and I hung out a little bit. I worked on bright familiar some talked to my stepsister. They came back and uh, my mom was we you know we were hungry. We were very hungry and wanted lunch. By now it's like 1 1 30 and my mom has stopped to buy wine and <laughs> she calls and she says what kind of wine do you want and I'm like I don't want wine we're you know let's let's get some lunch and pack up and go. I said well we want to eat and she said oh okay. Um, but I told her a kind of wine anyway because it was easier than arguing right. So they get back they've bought wine and uh, oh. I take it back. 
sensing <laughs> this could take a while and that David is hungry. And one thing about David is that um, he has to eat regularly in order to take his medication. And there were some snacks in the house, but they weren't the right kind of thing for him to eat. So I said, um, why don't we meet you somewhere for lunch? Just pick a place and we'll meet you. Cause my mom said, well, I'm starving too. So we met them at the Patty Jewett golf course in Colorado Springs, which was lovely. It sat outside and, um, yeah, great place, great food. It was, you know, very, it was great decompress. And by now it's come clear. David said to me that my mom had showed him, see, look, I've got a little alfalfa thing going on with the Clarissa deal. They don't have to tuck that under <laughs> said that my mom had said, this is the room you'll sleep in. And I, I'm like, no, we never talked about spending the night. I said that we were going to drive up and drive back, uh, too late to make a long story short. We ended up spending the night. Um, so we hung out there in Colorado Springs and my stepdad had a flight, one of those little puddle jumpers from Colorado Springs to DIA and then to Tucson and his little puddle jumper didn't take off from Colorado Springs on time. And then it landed and it sat on the tarmac at DIA cause they were having big storms from the golf course. We could actually see this big storm go past us and we were happy it didn't rain on us, but unfortunately it rained on the airport. So it's, they didn't even, even though he landed before his connection took off, uh, they kept him sitting on the tarmac until, um, like, I don't know, almost 40 minutes. And he is not a good cell phone user. So we we're all like, maybe we haven't heard from him because he's on the plane, but he wasn't. So then he had to sit at DIA and I considered going up to get him, but they put him on a later flight and it was <laughs> because of traffic that front range traffic is insane. So even taking the bypass, the E 470 toll road, um, it would have taken me almost two hours to drive up to DIA to get him then to bring him back. But that was the fallback plan. Cause I'm like, then we can drive him back to Tucson. And, <laughs> and by that time, by the time I got there, he would have been about ready to board that flight. So we're like, hope he makes the plane. So he did make the plane. My stepsister picked him up. That part went fine. We spent the night at the house in Colorado Springs, got up the next morning, packed my mom up, drove her and the kitties, uh, back to Santa Fe. So now, um, alert schedulers among you will have noticed that I am a day behind schedule. So then on, I did wake up early Sunday morning and wrote a little bit on the book. Um, nowhere near my 3k per day. This is something that, um, you know, for all that I'm militant about getting my 3k per day and being ritualized about it. I may sneeze here. <coughs> Thank you. There's another, <coughs> uh, that when things are all topsy turvy like that, you know, it's like, if I can just get some, some words just to kind of keep my, my head in the book. And so then Monday, um, I drove my mom to Tucson and it was interesting. We listened to the audiobook of promised queen on the way. And so that was fun. That was, I hadn't gotten to listen to it yet. So it was fun to hear how Gabrielle Baker did on the book. At one point, my mom even asked if it was the same person doing all of those voices. And I said, yes. And I thought, you know, that's, that's a really, um, that's a huge compliment for an audiobook narrator, right? <clears throat> so someone using their Jake break. They're not supposed to do that. And that's why, cause it's loud and obnoxious. There's a mountain pass not far from here and the sound do echo on sometimes. So one thing, um, as my mom were, and I were driving by, we go through, um, on I 10 through Benson, Arizona. I figure you guys can look these things up on the map if you actually care, but there is a sort of a narrow place where it goes through a uh, dragoon monument, which has all of these amazing tumbled rocks. I really like it. It's a cool place. And there was a fire there and we could actually see the flames and lots of smoke, but 
you know, it's, you don't always see the flames and we saw those and it was like, wow. And then the next day I 10 in both directions was closed. So we were really happy that we hadn't um, driven like all the way from Colorado Springs to get within an hour of their house and have to detour. <laughs> we would have been so bad. So fortune favored us there. Um, got there mid afternoon. My stepsister had taken uh, my stepdad to the doctor. Uh, he had a, like a 140 appointment with their concierge GP. And so uh, he still has to take more antibiotics. Um, the the arm where he had the surgery is still not good. So it's it's good that we got him home and got him back under her care because as she said, she knows them really well. Uh, you know, she said she recommended in the future that if they were going to have a procedure like that to stick around home just because she can treat them because she knows them. It's like if anybody had thought it was going to be that big of an impact, they wouldn't have traveled. Alas. <laughs> so then yesterday morning, Tuesday morning, I woke up and I worked on the book some, though it's difficult to do at my folks house because there's a lot of interruptions and distractions. I got some done and then I took an Uber to Tucson airport and flew up to Phoenix and sat and ate lunch and worked on the book a little bit more and then flew back to Santa Fe. David picked me up and now I have <laughs> a lot of book left to write in the next three days. I actually think I can do it. It's at most 15,000 words, um, which is a lot, but I can do 5,000 a day if I really crunch. And I don't think it's going to be that many. At least I know what the ending is and I think I can do this. Um, there's several things going on over the next few days, but if I may also um, contact my proofreader and ask her. So like if I send this Friday night, are you really going to start working on it then? <laughs> or can I send it maybe Saturday morning if necessary? And then I can also do a read through when I go through proofs to make sure that I'm hoping to do a full read through at that point. So um, don't panic. Keep your towel handy. <laughs> Uh, my mom was, was very appreciative. She kept thanking me. I kept saying, you don't have to keep thanking me. She's like, I do. Um, so, but you don't mom. Uh, she kept saying that she couldn't have done it by herself, which she couldn't have. Um, but I, w I was happy to do it and I, I don't have to drop everything like that very often to go help. And it was definitely, definitely the thing to do at the time. So, uh, what else? I had all sorts of things backed up. That's why I have not podcasted for the last few days. It was just one more thing than I could do. Um, all the things and I, I am tired. I, I definitely have, um, even though I've, I've been sleeping a whole lot, you know, it's like you could sleep nine hours and it only does so much. But um, I think I can do this without pushing the release date back, which is the fallback position. Um, and I, it's funny because yesterday I got a, a lovely note in uh, my private Facebook group in Jeffy's closet where someone asked if, um, well, she didn't ask, sorry. It, it's funny how Facebook tells me it's a question, but it's not really a question. But I, I cop, I asked her if I could share it. And so I did a screenshot of her comment, but she said, um, that she needed help. <laughs> and it's funny how literal Facebook is about this. Someone is asking, requesting your help. Uh, <laughs> she's like help. Uh, for some reason I s decided to start reading dark wizard at 10 o'clock last night and I couldn't stop. And so she <laughs> stayed up all night reading it and she was at work and, uh, I think it's a, she. I hope I got your pronouns right. And, <laughs> and I just love those. I mean, that's really the best compliment there is, right? When someone stays up all night, even though they're not supposed to reading the book, 
And she said, is it, I think that was where the question came in. Cause she said, is it July 9th yet? Uh, which is release date for bright familiar. <laughs> it's like soon, soon it will be July 9th. Um, sooner than some of us would like. So I'm really trying to make this release date. Let's see what else. I know I had lots of things I wanted to comment on, but, uh, I did appreciate, I think I was on, I think it was Friday when I said that I was pretty spacey and didn't have much to say. And, uh, someone commented saying that even when I don't have much to say that there's a lot for a newbie writer to learn. And I really appreciated that. I thought that was, um, that was lovely. It's nice to know that my babblings are uh, <laughs> useful to somebody. Um, yeah. So, you know, the thing is for me writing the book, I often slow down towards the end, but then once I get to the end, it goes fairly fast. I mean, compared to other parts of the book, I would not be trying to write approximately 15,000 words in three days, uh, in the middle of the book. Maybe I would, I don't think I would. Um, my little impatient is sort of impatienting beside me here. I don't want to break off her, her tender fronds. See, look, even she matches. Doo, doo, doo. <laughs> um, we also had two grandchild birthdays in the last few days. Uh, we had, um, one on Friday and one on Monday. So <laughs> it's, you know, it's funny because I often think about, you know, like sometimes there's a reference in books to like, there's the grandparents who are right there and being nurturing and supportive, you know, like the cookie baking grandmas. And, and I just want to put out there that I make very good cookies. I'm an excellent baker. Um, I don't often bake mostly because we don't need cookies around. Uh, but if, if someone wanted me to bake cookies, I totally would. We don't live near any of the grandchildren. Um, one set is, um, up in Denver and the other are up in Billings, Montana. But I keep thinking about the, it, it, I mean, is this a trope that there's like the set of grandparents who are like very busy traveling and doing things and, and they're not there for the grandchildren. They're always the bad grandparents, right? You know, they're, they're the ones who are out doing things. And it's like, I, I've come to realize that, that that's us, <laughs> you know, and, and the other grandparents, um, you know, go and visit a lot. They go far more than we could possibly squeeze in. And so, you know, it's sort of, um, it's a funny place to be. And I've always been when, when the kids were little, the kids who are now in their thirties, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, how do you raise children? I mean, you're always having that conversation, right? How do you steer them? You know, and, and it becomes, if you're paying attention at all, right, it becomes rapidly apparent that telling them things that lecturing them and placing rules, especially once they start to get into their teens, that that doesn't work. It doesn't have any impact. And we'd kind of come to the conclusion a long time ago that the best thing we could do was give the example to, you know, be, live our best lives and do go and make decisions according to our own rules to, to adhere to our own integrity. Um, and to, to try to teach by example that way. And there's only, you know, I mean, I think that that can look from the outside, like, not like you don't care, but you know, like you're absorbed in your own thing. And it's like, no, this is, this is how I, what I think is that you should be, you know, out living your life and doing your thing and not necessarily hovering and baking cookies. Um, so anyway, we had, we had a, a good conversation with the two older grandchildren and it was, uh, it was fun to talk to them last night and, uh, made some plans to see them later this summer. So, uh, hopefully that makes up for the, the lack of cookie baking and hovering. Uh, you know, it's just, maybe that's part of the thing with balance, right? Where you're always trying to figure out how do you balance all these things? And, um, 
you know, trying to work in the writing of books, it, it always feels, I don't know, making, why is it that making art always feels vaguely selfish? You know, it's like that you're working on this thing and you're taking away from, from people. But the thing is, is people will always take as much from you as you are <laughs> willing or that you don't fight to keep. And if you, if you want to write books, if you want to make art, if you want to do a thing, uh, sometimes that means telling the people, no, it's like, I'm going to write a book instead of baking cookies today. But if you want me to, I will bake you some cookies. Um, but I'm not going to bake cookies so that you can eat one bite and then go off and do your thing because I would love for you to go off and do your thing. So anyway, that was a rambly podcast today. Uh, but you know what? You guys should be grateful. <laughs> you got anything at all. Uh, tomorrow will be better. So I'll remind you all first cup of coffee is part of the frolic media podcast network, and you will find more podcasts you love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. Really and truly take care. Bye-bye.